Steve has just handed me a data recovery job while smirking. This should be fun. I'm afraid. Nothing good can come of Steve smirking. We need the data recovered from the broken USB flash drives and a possible donor USB flash drive if needed. Not sure if chip can be swapped to new USB flash. This is the donor. And, oh, okay, let's see what you did. Oh my. What the hell is this? So we've got ripped pads, check. We've got capacitor with a solder blob. Check. We've got residual flux remaining. Check. All right. Let's see what the other side of this lovely board looks like. And what? What? What, what is this? What did you do? Oh, yeah. Let, let's. Just, I gave you a donor drive so that you can just take the NAND off of this and put it on the donor, right? After I almost rip the pins off and bend them and leave my solder blobs there. And rip the pins off and pads off of the... But why? Oh my god, why? Why did you do this? Wh oh. Poor little flash drive. Who hurt you, flash drive? Who hurt you? Tell us who hurt you. Who did this to your poor little pins? Oh my. Alright, so we've got some work to do here. And let's see what it is we can get done. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is try and fix these solder bridges. And I'm going to probably ruin the tip of this iron by remo trying to remove these solder bridges because I'm going to use the tip of the iron to try to bend the pins back as I go. So I'm going to kind of try to spread this to the rest. I'm going to... Yeah, I just don't feel like changing iron so that I can wick. And wicking with micro pencil destroys the tip. Don't tell Paul this. Uh, Paul would kill me if he knew I was wicking with a micro pencil. And plus, I get to touch up the solder pads on the other side so they now look shiny instead of lead free. That makes me happy. All right, so this is going to be a challenging one over here. These legs are all bent coming out of the chip. That one doesn't want to move. There we go. Four hundred is a bargain for this. All right, so this is th that that pad. Wait, look, there's a pad missing over here, under the. Yeah, look, see this? That one. There's no pad there. Also, oh, you're gonna have to scratch your scratch. Oh there's my. No pad on there. I can't see, but. Now see this right one. Right there, there's no pad. There's no pad. Mm. So I mean, I don't know if the donor is gonna be the same shit. Uh, let's. Okay, so. And this pad is kind of moving around under the, under the pin. It's good, but it's just not bright enough when I want to zoom in a lot. So I want to, I want to try to hook it up to a higher voltage so I can get more. Stolen by Orhan. Oh, cool. Thank you. Right, so this pad has got to get moved over. But it also has to touch the leg. Okay, that's good enough. So that pad is bent looking and that pin is bent looking. However, they are clearly making contact. The one that is of the biggest concern to me is this thing over here, which I'm praying is ground or a redundant power pin. What I mean by redundant is let's say that this chip is supposed to be getting power on four or five different pins and one of them is not, then it doesn't really matter because it's getting it from the other. So I can only pray that that's what's going on here. Because if not, then that means that, that I'm going to have to remove it 
Find where that pad is going to. Finding where this pad is going to would suck. And then uh, put the thing back on. Uh, I just don't... I really don't want to do that. I don't, I don't want to put enough heat on this memory chip to do that. And I kind of want to make that side look pretty, too. I like it when it looks pretty. I have one side leaded and one side lead free. My OCD won't allow that to, to stand. Yeah. I was tr I tried it the other day. Did you find it in your cubby right there? Where it was? Yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's painful. Like you said it took an hour. Yep. I, I, I didn't know that that was I did I keep forgetting that there's stuff under that the Ziploc bag thing container. Now we got to work a little bit on this side. No big deal. So, are those supposed to be there? what the cap bridge? I don't know what those are for. I hope not. I suppose I could always look. I could always open the donor. But the funny thing is, he thinks that this donor is actually going to be the same because I've opened multiple of these flash drives that look exactly the same into the same model, and the inside is always different. Yeah, the inside is always different. Did I see Paul S. in the chat? Oh, Paul S. is in the chat. Why is he yelling no? Paul S., wh what's the no? Oh, is, was it wicking with the micro pencil? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to be gentle. No, he's not going to... Th that's not why he's going to hate us. He's going to hate us when he sees his cue tomorrow. <laughs> he's going to go to CSAT and say, I think this is a better work environment. <laughs> I'll piss in a bottle <laughs> if I have. <laughs> oh, poor Paul. I, I just I can't stand seeing those lead-free solder joints. They hurt my eyes. I want shininess. If we're gonna do all this work to bring this back, it might as well make it a work of art. This is also going to help if I actually need to remove that chip on the bottom. I'd like the melting temperature to be lower so that I don't have to put as much heat on it. Paul S. is screaming, no! Okay. So, can we get rid of this? What, what the... Wait, there's no pads under this capacitor. What? Well, luckily, this seems like it's going to be for power, not data, because it's really large. Yeah, there's no pads for this thing anyway. Wait, oh, there, there's the pads. They're hiding under all the dirt. All right. These look like filter caps. Or yeah, okay, so we can get you on there. Poor Paul. You might not have to run jumpers, huh? Uh, I gotta figure out where power is. It'll be easier for me if I solder the first pin on just to get the thing to stay while I work. I always prefer to solder the original USB connector on because then I don't have to look up the USB power uh, USB color code. 
which is kind of lame of me, but. Because I always, never remember it. Red is always power on, on DC, and black is always ground. The rest is data. But the, yeah, but I don't know which data wire is which, usually. Oh, uh, green plus white minus. <laughs> Don't you wish your girlfriend were hot like me? Don't you wish your girlfriend were a freak like me? Is this the orientation you have it? Is, it, is the filler on the top or on the bottom? Hmm? Fillers on the... I have two holes up there. Bottom, so this is going to be upside down then. Red is going to be first on the left. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, so I got one data. Uh, two data. I should probably scrape off the trace first. Fiberglass pen would come in handy here, but I have my handy... Well, why use a $2 tool when I could use my $50 tip for my micro-soldering pencil? Makes much more sense. Okay, now which one of these is actually the... the hmm, I gotta see which one is the actual trace. Okay, it's going to be this, the, the, the light green is the trace, the dark green is not. Yeah. yeah. I was scratching the dark green like a dumbass. Paul is probably watching this screaming. It's the light green, not the dark green, you dumb f... Dark green is not the trace. Yeah. All right. I really hope I don't have to remove that memory chip on the bottom to find out where that missing pad goes. That would suck. Why don't connect near IC? Because that means my wire is going to be longer. The longer my wire, the more likely for noise and screw-ups that I don't want to deal with. Whenever you're doing some messed up stuff like this, keep the wires as short as you can. Break off. Yeah, the trace did go under the connector. It went here. So we want our wire there.
I should just get, pick up Paul's Omni Vice and stop torturing myself with the moving board. The board moving as you work is kind of annoying. And I own an Omnivice. I know. I, I, I just didn't want to get up and take it from Paul. All right. Next up. All right. So display capture. All right. So check it out. So I'm going to unplug the drive. Goes away. That's this. I plug it in. And it shows up. Bada bing. And I saw that there was data on it. I just can't show you what the names of the stuff inside of it is. But we do have data. Do you need professional level data recovery? Did you give your device to a local franchise repair shop that made it worse than it was before you brought it in? Well, don't delay. Check out RossmanGroup.com today. That's RossmanGroup.com, where we can do data recovery on hard drives, whether it's USB to SATA conversion, decryption, head swaps, platter swaps, and more. We can get it done in our Lamino Flow Bench with our data recovery experts. If you have an iPhone that needs data recovery as a result of a drop or liquid damage, we've got you covered. We can even get data from any of the new Touch Bar MacBooks where the solid state drive is soldered onto the board. Whatever type of data recovery you need, you can trust the experts at RossmanGroup.com to get it done for you. With excellent reviews on many websites over the past 10 years, you just can't lose. Live out of state? Live far away? Well, don't worry about it. You can go to SendYourMacBook.com or click the mail-in button on RossmanGroup.com. That's the mail-in button on RossmanGroup.com for instructions on how to send us your data recovery job from anywhere in the world. And if you live within the continental United States, we'll even give you return shipping at no additional charge. With these type of policies, you just can't lose. If you need professional-level data recovery, head on over to RossmanGroup.com. That's RossmanGroup.com for more details.